Hello lovely people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biochemistry playlist. In the last video, we talked about the first glycogen storage disease, which is von Gerke disease, also known as glycogen storage disease type 1. Today, it's time to talk about Pompe disease or glycogen storage disease number 2. Pompe affects your pump. In Pompe's disease, I am unable to break down my glycogen into glucose. And lots of metabolites will build up in my heart until they trash my pump. So I get cardiomyopathy, I can get arrhythmias and much more. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and let's get into this. Before you watch this video, please refer to my video titled Glycogen, which you'll find in this biochemistry playlist. What are these glycogen storage diseases? Glycogen storage disease type 1 is von Gerke, type 2 is Pompe's disease, type 3 is Corey, type 4 is Anderson, type 5 is McCardell, and type 6 is Ur's disease. If the genie came to me and said to me, hey medicosis, you have been cursed by a glycogen storage disease, which one would you choose? Well, I hate all of them. If I have to choose, I'll go with Corey or glycogen storage disease type 3. Why is that? Because it's a mild disease. For sure, I will not choose type 4 or Anderson. That's evil. This can lead to death early in childhood. So these are the most important glycogen storage diseases, but these are not all of them. In fact, there are about 15 or so, maybe more today, glycogen storage diseases. These are the ones that we'll discuss. All of them are autosomal recessive, although be careful because some of them can have more than one pattern of inheritance. These disease symptoms usually manifest themselves in infancy or early childhood. There is no predilection towards female males or males. Now let's memorize one or two things about each disease. Von Gerke's disease is the most common, although some textbooks will claim that type 6 is now the most common. Von Gerke is the one that affects the liver, it has high uric acid which increases the risk of gout and it can have anemia. Next, type 2 is Pompe's disease. Pompe, remember the pump, the heart, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, etc. Type 3 is Cori. A very mild disease. That's why I drew a smaller liver relative to von Gerke. Symptoms are similar, but von Gerke is way more severe than Cori disease. Type 4 is Anderson, pure evil, cirrhosis, ascites, splenomegaly, and it can lead to early death. Type 5 is McCardle. McCardle, remember skeletal muscles, which will lead to generalized muscle weakness all over the body. Type 6 symptoms are similar to type 1. Now let's talk about glycogen. Glycogen is what? It's a big sugar. The big sugar stored in animals is glycogen. In plants, starch. Now let's review what we've said before about the difference between insulin world and glucagon world. Insulin is the land of abundance. When you eat, when you are in the feeding state, well, you have too much stuff. So you can afford to store it for later. Amino acids can be built up into proteins. Glucose will be built up into glycogen, i.e. the small sugar will be converted to the big sugar for storage. Use me for the now, glycolysis, or store me for the morrow glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis and let's store the free fatty acids as big triglycerides so insulin is anabolic it's a builder it's in the feeding land but in the land of fasting or starvation it's the story of glucagon and epinephrine and basically almost every other hormone except insulin insulin alone is here every other hormone is almost anti-insulin so glucagon break down because i'm starving i need readily available sources of energy right now break down the proteins into amino acids and then take those amino acids with some free fatty acids you can make glucose from non-carbohydrate sources i.e new sources gluconeogenesis i will make glucose from new sources break down that glycogen into glucose in a process known as glycogenolysis so in the feeding state insulin will help you build up glycogen hashtag glycogenesis but in the fasting state glucagon will help you 
break down glycogen. Hashtag glycogenolysis. What's the key enzyme in glycogen synthesis? Glycogen synthase. What's the key enzyme in glycogen breakdown? Glycogen phosphorylase. How did insulin activate the former? Glycogen synthase. By dephosphorylating that enzyme. But how does glucagon activate the glycogen phosphorylase? By phosphorylating it. Now let's take it up a notch. Here is glycogen built up. It's the land of insulin. But glycogen catabolism is the land of glucagon. Name the process glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis. Name the process glycogenolysis. Name the key rate limiting enzyme glycogen synthase versus glycogen phosphorylase. That's the most important enzyme here and the most important enzyme here. What's the second most important enzyme? If you're trying to build up, it's the branching enzyme. It adds branches. But how about the glycogen breakdown? It's a debranching enzyme. We're trying to break down, so you remove a branch. When you remove a branch or when you break down a bond in the presence of water, it's hydrolysis, so debranching enzyme has a hydrolase activity. So it's the feeding state versus the fasting state, the land of insulin versus the land of glucagon, the land of abundance versus the land of scarcity, anabolism stan versus catabolism stan. When you're trying to make a bond, usually it's a condensation reaction. Add this small sugar to this small sugar. Before you know it, you have a big sugar. But when you're trying to break down, you start with a big molecule. In this case, it's glycogen. And you break it down into glucose, 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 etc. So this is hydrolysis. Condensation versus hydrolysis. You're adding water in hydrolysis. But in condensation, water leaves the chat. Do you see this? This is a carbohydrate a sugar made of only three carbons, i.e. a triose. How about my glucose? No, glucose has six carbons. It's a hexose. When I'm joining together glucose molecules in order to make glycogen, how do I bind the glucose molecules together? By glycosidic linkages, covalent bonds. So here is a glycosyl residue, another glycosyl residue, bind them together by a glycosidic bond. So let's join some monosaccharides together to make disaccharides and then polysaccharides. So let's join two monosaccharides together to make one disaccharide. Monosaccharide plus monosaccharide, thank you glycosidic bond, water leaves the chat because this is dehydration, i.e. condensation reaction. Now you have a disaccharide. Keep adding them together, glycosidic bond, condensation, water leaves, you end up with a polysaccharide. This is a glucose. This is a glycogen. Look at that. Here is one monosaccharide. Here is another monosaccharide. And we're doing what? Joining them together, glycosidic bond. You end up with disaccharide. In this example, if the bond is between one and four, it's a maltose or silibiose. Which picture is this one? This is a beta configuration, so this is silibiose. But if it's alpha, then it's maltose. To understand the difference between the alpha and the beta, check out my biochemistry playlist for MCAT, especially my video on the chair configuration. Can you give me some examples of polysaccharides? We have cellulose, plants, starch, plants, glycogen, animals. Look at the starch in plants, alpha 1 and 4 glycosidic bonds, okay? But look at glycogen, also alpha 1 and 4 glycosidic bonds, and it branches up or down at alpha 1 and 6 glycosidic bonds. So if you keep adding glucose, 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 glucose in series like this, horizontally, so to speak, you're using alpha 1 and 4. But to add a branch above it or below it, you will be branching at alpha 1 and 6. Let's build up glycogen. You need glycogen synthase. That's the main enzyme. What's the second most important? Branching enzyme. Let's do the opposite. Glycogen to glucose. All right, I will need glycogen phosphorylase. That's the key rate limiting enzyme. I'll need a debranching enzyme. And the last step is to convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose. How do you do that? Just remove a phosphate. How do you remove a phosphate? Phosphatase. I'm removing a phosphatase from carbon number 6 of glucose. So it's glucose 6-phosphatase. What are the names of the organs that have glycogen in them? Liver, that's the most important one, and the muscle. But there is a huge difference between the two. You see this last enzyme? It's only present in the liver, not in the muscle, which means the only organ that can give you free glucose without phosphate is the liver. 
the muscle can never do it. And that's why when the liver breaks down its own glycogen, it can give you pure glucose for your blood, which will go to every other organ, heart, brain, muscles, kidneys, you name it. But when the muscle breaks down its own glycogen, it will go all the way until glucose 6-phosphate and stop because the muscle lacks the enzyme, glucose 6-phosphatase, necessary to convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose, which means glucose 6-phosphate will end up being trapped in the muscle because phosphorylation fixes stuff. This glucose 6-phosphate is fixed in the muscle. It can never leave, which means the muscle glycogen can never serve as a source of glucose for your blood. Put differently, the liver is altruistic, but the muscle is egotistic. The liver's glycogen will give glucose to every organ, but the muscle's glycogen gives energy only for the muscle. Greedy. And that's why in type 1 glycogen storage disease, von Gerke's, the patient suffers from what? Fasting hypoglycemia. Because now the liver lacks this enzyme and cannot provide us with glucose for the blood. So during fasting, the patient suffers from low glucose in the blood. Contrast that with type 5 glycogen storage disease, myocardial disease, where the problem is in the muscle glycogen phosphorylase. Do you think this muscle will be able to break down its glycogen to glucose 6-phosphate? No. So the muscles will be weak. But will my serum glucose be affected? No, because the muscle never gave us glucose. So if the muscle is screwed up, tough on the muscle, but not on the rest of the body. If the muscle is suffering, but the liver is healthy, the liver will give me glucose for the blood and I will not suffer from fasting hypoglycemia. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. I am showing you this slide just to tell you that the word amylose, amylopectin, etc. refers to what? Big sugar. Dextrin is also another word to associate with carbohydrate. In the feeding state, insulin approves this message, let's make glycogen, glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. How do I do this? Hexokinase or glucokinase. And then glucose 6-phosphate into glucose 1-phosphate. Oh, so the phosphate uh, jumped from 6 to carbon number 1? Exactly. What's the name of this mutating enzyme? Phosphoglucomutase. Then glucose 1-phosphate through many steps will give us glycogen. Thank you, glycogen synthase. Thank you, branching enzyme. Now we have glycogen, okay? However, in the fasting state, epinephrine and glucagon approve this message, glycogen phosphorylase, D branching enzyme. Glycogen becomes glucose 1-phosphate, and then by the same mutase, glucose 6-phosphate. By the key enzyme, glucose 6-phosphatase, part of gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, you convert glucose 6-phosphate into glucose by removing a phosphate group. Let's make glycogen. First, glycogen synthase. It keeps adding glucose, adding glucose, adding glucose in the alpha 1 and 4 direction, in just one direction, in series, horizontally. If you want to add a branch above me, that's alpha 1 and 6. You need to talk to the branching enzyme, not the glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase is only 1 and 4. How about branch up or branch down? That will be alpha 1 and 6. It's a transferase, so to speak, because it transfers glucose from here to here. So the branching enzyme could be thought of as a transferase. Alpha 1 and 6 transferase to be specific. Here is the horizontal chain, alpha 1 and 4. If you want to add a branch above it, alpha 1 and 6. This is glycogen synthase. This is the branching enzyme. Mnemonic time, alpha 1 and 4 keep moving forwards. Whereas alpha 1 and 6 is sexy, which means someone has to jump on top. I am sorry. Next, let's break down glycogen into glucose. First, glycogen phosphorylase. What does that do? It breaks down the alpha 1 and 4. Oh, in the main chain. Yep. Next, you remove part of the branch. Look at this. Who's going to remove this? Debranching enzyme. You remove it from here and you add it to the main branch. So you can think of the debranching enzyme as alpha 1 and 4. Alpha 1 and 4 transferase. But when you cut 
It's alpha-1 and 6 glucosidase. There is another alpha glucosidase in the lysosome. The lysosome is full of acids. That's why they call it lysosomal acid alpha glucosidase, which is still a debranching enzyme, so to speak. We can call it lysosomal alpha-1 and 4 glucosidase. It has alpha-1 and 4 activity and alpha-1 and 6 activity, just like a good old debranching enzyme. The key concept in many of these glycogen storage diseases is that I either cannot make glycogen or more commonly cannot break down glycogen into glucose. And of course, if I cannot make glycogen, I will not be able to utilize glycogen later. No input, no output. The end result is whenever I fast, I cannot break down glycogen to glucose, so I get fasting hypoglycemia. All of that glycogen will accumulate in my liver, hepatomegaly, or in my muscle, muscle problems, or in the heart, cardiomyopathy. What's the normal? The liver stores glycogen for the blood. What's the abnormal in these glycogen storage diseases? Fasting hypoglycemia. What's the normal? The skeletal muscle stores glycogen, and this glycogen is only for the muscle. The muscle is egotistic. So therefore, glycogen storage diseases that affect the muscle will lead to muscle weakness because the muscle cannot utilize glycogen as a source of energy for itself. But the diseases that affect the muscles only, like myocardial disease, usually do not have fasting hypoglycemia. Next, red blood cells do not store glycogen. That's why in these glycogen storage diseases, Diseases, you will never hear of hemolytic anemia. But hemolytic von Gerke's disease might have anemia. Yeah, anemia. We do not know its cause, but it's not hemolytic anemia. Even if it is hemolytic anemia, every rule has exception. So these are the six glycogen storage diseases. Von Gerke's disease is missing glucose 6-phosphatase, and we call this type 1. How about type 2? Pompey's disease. Think of Pompey, pump. The problem is in the hearts lysosomal acid alpha glucosidase you can also call it alpha 1 and 4 glucosidase some books will even call it just debranching enzyme which is fair enough type 3 which is cori is a problem in the debranching enzyme type 4 is anderson is a problem in the branching enzyme no input no output you know who's trapped in the liver glucose 1 phosphate if you're phosphorylated you're trapped these liver cells will be toast and the patient can develop cirrhosis anderson is evil mccardle disease is a problem in the glycogen phosphorylase only of the muscle so I get what? Muscle weakness? How about type 6, which is Ehr's disease? Same glycogen phosphorylase, but the one that's in the liver. So you get hepatomegaly and fasting hypoglycemia. Complications of all of these glycogen storage diseases include liver failure and cirrhosis. Yeah. Arrhythmia and cardiomyopathy. Yeah. As well as muscle weakness and muscle destruction. How can we diagnose? You can look for the abnormal gene on its corresponding chromosome and you can measure the level of the enzyme. It will be lacking. For example, von Gerke's disease will have very low levels of glucose 6-phosphatase. And since in almost all of them, glycogen keeps piling up and accumulating, you can test for this by the periodic acid shift, immunohistochemical technique. PAS loves sugar. And if you have too much of it, you will be PAS positive. Management. Well, since fasting hypoglycemia is a common concern, keep the patient on a diet that provides regular glucose supplements. Do not let the patient fast for a long time. If you can give the patient the enzyme that is missing, that's amazing. When the liver is toast, it's time for liver transplant. When the heart is toast, it's time for heart transplant. Before the heart is toast, if it's just arrhythmia, you can add a pacemaker. Glycogen storage disease type 2, aka Pompey disease. Here is the defective gene on chromosome 17, long arm, deficiency of lysosomal acid alpha glucosidase, aka lysosomal acid alpha 1 and 4 glucosidase, which also has alpha 1 and 6 activity, which can be thought of a special debranching enzyme in the lysosome. What's going to happen? If I'm missing something similar to the debranching, I cannot break down glycogen to glucose. What do I get? accumulation of glycogen in the heart so I get arrhythmias I can get cardiomegaly cardiomyopathy etc is the heart the only muscle in the body no I also have skeletal muscles so you get proximal myopathy 
I also have a tongue with some smooth muscles, macroglossia. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle, diaphragmatic paralysis, respiratory failure, and maybe death. Some of these patients have aneurysms, such as intracranial aneurysms, for an unknown reason. Maybe because it's weakness of the muscle in the blood vessel, but I cannot say for sure. Management, special diet. For the arrhythmia pacemaker, when it's severe cardiomyopathy before the heart is completely toasted and the patient is gone, heart transplant. Here is a mnemonic for glycogen storage disease type 2 or Pompe's disease. Pompe, take that P and that P and remember that Pompe's disease destroys your pump, trashes your heart. And since you cannot break down glycogen, glycogen will accumulate in the heart and glycogen is a big sugar which is PAS positive, periodic acid shift, an immunohistochemical technique. What's the O? Oh my goodness, I'm missing my lysosomal acid alpha glucosidase enzyme. It has alpha 1 and 4 glucosidase and alpha 1 and 6 activity. You can think of it as a special debranching enzyme inside the lysosome. Symptoms with the M, cardiomyopathy, proximal myopathy in my trunk and proximal muscles, and macroglossia, probably due to accumulation of glycogen there. How about the E? It's autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance. If you like this video, you will enjoy my endocrine pharmacology course. It will teach you about the different types of insulin, calculating the dose of insulin for your patient with diabetes, the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, as well as diabetic ketoacidosis. Download it today at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. To learn about diabetes of pregnancy, gestational diabetes, and to learn about preeclampsia, eclampsia, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, the liver diseases that happen in pregnancy or around pregnancy, download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. If you do not want to download my courses and would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier. You will gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe, hit the bell, support the channel here or here, go to my website to download my notes, courses, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.